What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So this video is going to be very different from my usual videos. For those of you guys that have been subscribed to me and know me, you guys know my perspective on the stock market and you guys know how I am. You guys know that I'm very bullish on the future of the US economy and the future outlook on the stock market. But in today's video, I'm going to be talking about why I think a stock market crash or at least a very big correction is imminent. So if you want to see my opinions on the incoming stock market crash and how I'm planning to combat the crash, stay tuned and you guys already know it's time to cue that intro. So before we get into the reasons why I think that we're going to get into a stock market crash, just a quick disclaimer, these are just my opinions, so take everything with a grain of salt. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, neither do you or anybody else out there. So like I said before, these are just opinions, take with a grain of salt. And if you guys like my insight or you found anything of value or maybe it helped you with your portfolio or how to manage it or combat this upcoming stock market crash, consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, subscribe if you guys want to see more of my opinions. But yeah, with that being said, let me get into the reasonings why I believe this upcoming crash is going to happen. As a country and as a world, we're going through a lot right now from supply chain issues to inflation. But I think the most primary reason why we're going to get inside of a market crash is because of the rise in cases. And I'm no medical expertise or anything like that, but I think it's pretty apparent when looking at this chart that we're going through an exponentially large curve when it comes to rising cases in America. So with that being said, I think it's very dangerous, especially with the new variant out there, which is supposedly more contagious and also affecting vaccinated people we're not even fully vaccinated and on top of that we also believe in herd immunity and i think that these two mentalities can really make it dangerous for the rising cases for example in a lot of different places we're kind of getting a little bit too free as i like to call it meaning that a lot of people are just doing whatever they want not really thinking too much about the cases and again it's everyone's own opinion and choice so i'm not going to say anything about that but with that being said, it's just a little bit scary to know that vaccinated people can get sick too. And this is not over. This is more contagious than it's ever been. And I think that that kind of Trojan horse feeling that, for example, a person that's vaccinated can still get sick. It's kind of scary, especially with the rising cases and it's starting to get exponentially bad again. So with that being said, I think that that's going to be a huge underlying issue, not only to people in general but also to these companies and stocks that we invest into again we've been through a supply chain issues and we've been through inflation but these are two things that can be affected again negatively because of the rise in cases so with that being said let's take a look at this chart and kind of see where we stand so right now we're at a seven day average of 110,000 cases per day the last cases reported was about 36,000, which is not that significant compared to the 110,000, but that's because that was a Sunday as a recording of this video. So typically on the weekends, a lot of people don't really go and get tested. So it kind of skews the numbers and that's just kind of been a recurring pattern. If, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like white marks over here and those are just the weekends. You can see that they're at a regular interval. So that just kind of shows that. So with that being said, we're kind of halfway through the peak of this COVID winter, and that's when a lot of cases were being reported. And then you can see we kind of died down over here. We also went into lockdown over here. So that's about halfway through or even a third of the way at the point we are right now. So of course, the reasoning for that was we didn't have a vaccine. We didn't know too much about the virus at all. But still, even with that being said, we're still triple the amount. And to be honest, we even started getting into problems with hospitalization around over here. And we're above that point as of now. So let's go scroll down and take a look at the hospitalization statistics. So if we take a look over here, you can see that we're above that level that we were back in July when we started to worry about hospitalizations. And then you can see that we're also trending upwards and kind of getting close to the peak when we were in a very, very volatile situation. And again, there's really nothing that we can do. We just have to hope in the U.S. government and hopefully they'll be able to help with the spread of or at least stopping the spread of the virus but this is just something to be very wary of especially when it comes to hedging ourselves against the stock market and hopefully nothing bad will happen and then also we've got the vaccination statistics over here you can see that we're almost at 60 percent for at least one dose administered per person so that's not bad of course there's going to be people that don't want to get the vaccine or people that haven't had the chance to get it yet 
So that's kind of there. But to be honest, this statistic doesn't really matter in this situation just because a lot of people with a vaccine are still getting sick now. And we'll kind of get back to this later on in the video. But I think that is just very important to know these statistics when it comes to this spread of the virus. Before we get into the stocks I'm staying away from and the stocks that I'm kind of going towards, let's talk about what's going on in the world today. And again, all the articles that I use are going to be in the link in the description. So if you guys want to check out yourself, that will all be there in the description. So we've got the reported Delta variant cases worldwide over here. And you guys can see that the countries being hit the hardest over here are India, UK, and the USA. So we're going to kind of relate these countries together and kind of see where the US stands amongst these other countries. So let's take a look at the timeline of the Delta variant. So you guys can see that in December 2020, this is when the Delta variant first got really detected in India. So this right here is just the acronym or whatever you want to call it, code name for the Delta variant. So with that being said, you guys can see it was first detected in December 2020. And with that being said, it was also detected on May 10th in Missouri over here. It was also detected in a few other places, but this article in particular highlights Kansas City. So we're just going to go with that for this example. So December 2020, remember that. And then we've also got the UK Delta variant over here. And this is slightly before May and right after April. So let's just call it April for this example. And this is what I really want to highlight over here. So here's the situation for the cases and what's going on in India. So remember that in December 2020 is really when the Delta variant got detected. So if we go from January, February, March, April, we can see that it really picked up over here. So around the three to four month mark and then it really peaked out on May. So that's about five months out and then it started to die down. But that was really the giant peak over here. And again, these situations are all very different. India has a very low vaccination rate. So you can see that it skyrocketed over here compared to the initial wave. So if we take a look at UK, we're gonna still see the kind of the same initial pattern. So remember it was detected sometime between April and May. It's gonna be the same three to four month pattern before that initial squeeze or that initial pop. So a clear pattern is starting to get formed over here. We can see that after three or four months of getting detected, there's a pop that kind of puts us right at the same levels of the peak and then it starts to die down. Same thing with India, except in this case, it was very different. The pop was way higher and then it started to die down after three or four months. Where I'm really starting to get concerned is when it comes to the US. It's been more than three to four months since we first detected the virus over here, at least the Delta variant. And since then, we've been only trending upwards and we're only about halfway through the peak. And that's the kind of scary part because we're at a situation where not that much people are really talking about it. A lot of people believe that they're 100% immune and things are just getting really, really bad between vaccinations and the hospitals and all that. So with that being said, it's kind of a situation where I believe that it could potentially lead to a lockdown. I'm not 100% sure. Obviously, nobody really knows but it seems that we're trending in a very, very negative direction. And the rise in cases can really have a bunch of different implications. Again, we don't really know if this is gonna 100% lead to a stock market crash. Again, these are just my opinions, but I believe that the rise in cases have a tons of implications. For example, if everyone starts to stay home or not really go out again, these recovery stocks can get really hurt. These companies aren't gonna grow as much, which could lead to supply chain issues. People are going to start to stay home or maybe even possibly stop working again, which could lead to more stimulus, which could lead to more inflation. So you guys can see there's a lot of different cause and effects that could really go on with the rising of cases. Who knows, maybe we'll be able to brush it off and we see that dip sooner than later and things start to go back to normal or maybe we start getting booster shots. Who really knows at this point, but I think it's very important to start taking action, especially if you want to start hedging your portfolio against a potential stock market crash. So let's talk about the stocks that I'm staying away from and the ones that I'm starting to go towards. So the first type of stock that I'm staying away from are the recovery stocks. So that's pretty much anything from cruise lines, airlines, travel, store reopening plays, for example, Nordstrom, Macy's, things like that. And the reason for that is if there is a potential lockdown, these stocks are going to get hit really bad. And even if there isn't, the uncertainty can really hurt them in the short term, especially because they already ran up quite a bit. And with the uncertainty, they could, you know, completely crash or even get hurt. Maybe once things start to get a little bit more certain or we really kind of know the direction that we're going to go towards, 
I think maybe then it'll be a good time to hop back into these plays. But for now, it's pretty uncertain what's going to happen with them. And on top of that, a lot of them already took on a lot of debt. So if they're able to take on even more debt, this could hurt them in the short and long term. So I think that's just something to be very wary of and cautious. And again, if there is a lockdown, there's less reason to go traveling or go to these plays, for example, going to stores and things like that. So I definitely could see some of these stocks getting hit. So that's the first type of stock that I'm staying away from. The next type of stock that I'm staying away from are the stay at home stocks. So things like Netflix, potentially even Disney with their streaming service and Zoom. And the reason for that is I don't really know the type of situation that we're in. It seems like we're kind of in the middle phase where we don't really know if we're staying at home right now because of lockdowns or if we're going to be completely fine in a few weeks or even a month. So it's kind of weird. So right now, those stocks aren't really performing as well. So it's kind of a good thing to stay away unless you want to buy the dip or these stocks could potentially do well if things go back into lockdown. So I don't really want to take that risk and that's why I'm staying away from it personally. Even if we do get a stimulus, I don't really think that people are going to be in the same mindset to kind of start buying and spending on these things again because this would be the second time so people would probably want to save their money this time around. So that's just my mindset when it comes to the stay at home type of stock. So that's why I'm staying away from them. And the last type of stocks that I'm staying away from are the momentum or risky stocks. So things like penny stocks, AMC, GME. And that's just because if I'm going to put my money into something, I'd rather put it into something that I can feel safe with, especially if I need it because of an emergency due to another lockdown. But again, guys, I don't know if this lockdown is going to happen. It's just a hypothetical projection that I can kind of see and hopefully it won't happen. But who knows? It might. So I'd rather be in safer things. So those are just a few stocks that I'm going to stay away from. So with that being said, let's talk about some of the things that I'm going to do to hedge myself against a potential stock market crash. So what I've been doing over the past few weeks is I've been building up my cash on the sidelines. I've been doing this through selling covered calls as well as selling puts to kind of build up their premium and use it as a cash reserve. I've also been getting into some cover call ETFs like NUSI just to kind of build up the extra cash. And the reason for this is... Because I believe that there's going to be a stock market crash, you guys know I'm very bullish on the stock market. So this is my ETF over here where I have some of the stocks that I believe are going to do well in the long term. I don't care about the short term. I'm buying the dip at any means necessary. So that's why I'm building up the cash so I can buy the dip. These are my very high quality stocks that I believe will do well in the short term. I have very high conviction on them. So in the long term, I'm going to be building on these companies and hopefully they'll do well in the long term in the short term i'll be happy if they go down that means i can buy them even more so as you guys can see a lot of these i've actually bought on february 16th and that's why i'm down quite a lot but it's been great because i've just been lowering my average and building my wealth in these companies which i don't plan to sell at any time at all so that's what i'm really doing with the stock market crash i'm building premiums and using that as a cash reserve and to buy these stocks so with that being said, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully there's not going to be any type of stock market crash. I don't hope that anybody gets sick or even hurt or whatever the possibilities are. I hope the stock market just keeps going up and to the right. But, you know, that doesn't ever really happen. So with that being said, these are my theories and what I think is going to happen in the next few months. Hopefully I'm completely wrong and the stock market does well. But with that being said, Here's my thoughts and let me know in the comments down below what you guys think, if you guys would counter any of my arguments or if you guys agree. Let me know down in the comments down below and also guys, if you guys enjoyed my content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean a lot. And with that being said guys, remember everybody eats.